Today, I want to share with you my heart. I'm coming to you from my home. It's not studio. I'm just sitting in a chair in my living room, and I want to talk to you heart to heart. And I want you to hear my heart, and I want you to know that I love you, and I love uh, the church, and I love the world, and I love America, and I love all people. Um, I, I believe in Jesus Christ. I try to do my best to be a, a Christian and represent Him well. And I'm also going to tell you that um, I'm grieved by culture right now. And so what I want to do in this video is I'm going to share with you um, what I think is going on with culture. It comes right out of the Word of God. It's kind of a 50,000 foot view. And once I share this video with you, then I'm going to apply it in the next three weeks and three other videos on how it applies to some things going on in the world specifically right now. So today is the principle, and then we'll look at the others. Um, uh, following the principle in the next few videos. Uh, let me just start by saying that we have a really mixed up view of love in our culture. Um, people are um, indulging in things that are clearly against what the Creator has for them. Um, they are flaunting it in the face of society and God and the church. And yet we're told that if we say anything other than applaud their, quote, bravery or applaud their lifestyle, then we are automatically not loving. We're not, uh, we're not being good Christians because good Christians love people, uh, that we're intolerant, that we're judgmental. And, and that's not love. That's, that's just simply not love. And, and then I've watched the church, and the church seems to have three different uh, ways of viewing it. One is, some of them are judgmental, and that's ungodly, that should not happen, but some people are judgmental. Two, it seems like the majority of, of, of people just don't want to talk about it. Uh, the church just doesn't address it. If we don't address some of these issues going on in our culture, maybe they'll just go away and fix themselves so they don't address it. Or third, and sadly to me, a lot of churches just condone it, just say, well, that's just, you know, that's just not a sin anymore. Uh, and, and it is fine, and we can't do that. that. That's just not our call. And so what I want to try to do is I, I want to try to love people but speak truth, speak the truth in love. And, but I know because you don't know me. Some of you that are going to watch this don't know me. You don't know my heart, and you don't know how much and how deeply I love people. And so I'm sure that this video can be put in the wrong hands, that it could be uh, used, and I am, I am going to be another sacrificial lamb maybe, uh, or, or in some way uh, indicted by culture for my lack of tolerance. But I want you to know everything I'm going to say in this video in the next few weeks. Um, I mean it from my heart, and, and it's because of love. And, and I just want to remind you of what love is and what love isn't. Okay? What love isn't is me uh, just letting you do anything you want to do, no matter who it hurts, including yourself, and I sit back and do nothing. And if I don't clap for you, while you're destroying your life, then I don't love you. And that's not love. Uh, I want you to think about love between a parent and a child because that's the love God has for us. Okay, and that's the love we're supposed to have for one another. A parent sometimes, because they love their child, doesn't give their child what they want. They give their child what they need. And a, a real simple illustration that will help you understand that is, um, if my four-year-old runs out in the street and I'm his parent, I love him enough to grab him and pull him out of the street and give him a pretty stern talking to and maybe swat his butt and say, you don't run out in the street or you're going to get killed. It's not because I'm judgmental. It's not because I'm taking away his freedom. It's not because I just don't understand the way culture is today. No, I'll tell you why it is. I love my kid enough not to let him die. And that's kind of how I feel in this video. And I know that sounds pretty melodramatic. But that's, that's what's in my heart. Um, God has birthed something in my heart that I have to say that, that uh, to be honest with you, I don't want to say, but I need to say and I have to say, and I just want you to hear my heart as I say it. Okay, so there's my heart. Now, let me give you the message. It's out of the book of Job. I don't know if you know anything about Job. Job was a man that lived in the Old Testament times. He was a pretty wealthy guy. Had a wife, had some kids, had a happy family, had a good life, had a lot of friends. You know, a lot like just the average person today in America. Good family, good kids, good friends, a lot of money for him. We don't all have a lot of money, but, but a good life, just a good life. 
And then all of a sudden, life just gets turned on its head. He loses his job, loses his business, goes broke. Then his kids get killed in a freak accident. And now Job is left with nothing but his wife and his friends. And his wife and his friends say, Job, can you not see how awful God is? How mean God is? How horrible God is? Look what He's done to you. Look what God has done to you. He's taken away all your money. He's taken away your job. He's taken away your career. He's killed your children. You, this is exactly what his wife said, you should curse God and die. That's what you should do. And that's his advice from his worldly friends. Well, Job is a good man, a man of faith. He loves God. And he's trying to figure out how to sort all this out. And so Job, the book of Job, is this conversation that's going on between Job and his wife and his three friends. And finally, we get toward the end of the book of Job to chapter 38, and God's had enough. <laughs> so God says, you know what, I'm going to intervene here, and, and Job, I want to have a conversation with you about what's really going on, and I want you to hear me. But here's the thing. In the words that God speaks in Job 38, 39, and 40, what we see and what we hear from God is exactly what we need today. It speaks exactly to our situation. It, spe it speaks to suffering. It speaks to a whole lot of things that are going on in the world that we need to be aware of. So I want to tell you now, read to you out of Job chapter 38 what God says to Job. Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. He said, Who is this that obscur obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Now, I'm going to read on and tell you what else he says here, but I want you to hear what he says. It's the creator of the universe. God is the creator of the universe. He's created the world. He's created us in His image. He loves us. But in our sin, we're like rebellious children, and we've gone away from Him. And the plan through Jesus Christ is He, he loves us. He wants to bring all people back to Him. And He's going to use a variety of ways to do that, but He is sovereign. And everything He's set up is for the good of His kids, including the Bible, the Word of God, which is the truth that He gives as parameters around us to help us, His kids, live the abundant life. God's not mean. God's not mad. God's not angry. God is love. That's what God is. God is love. And He loves us enough to let us know. He says, I've created the world. I understand how it works. I understand what works and doesn't work for you to have joy and contentment and peace and the abundant life. And I'm going to lay it down in the Bible and I'm going to lay out these parameters for you. And as long as as you play within the parameters, you're going to find that life is pretty good. Now, it doesn't mean life's going to be perfect because we all are going to suffer uh, different things that happen in life. Their suffering is just a part of life. But he says, I've set up the parameters. But if you get outside the parameters, there's going to be a price to pay, and you're going to get hurt. And he says, you have to understand that I have plans. And my plan is always, are you ready? In the sovereignty of God, His plan is always for my glory, God says, and your good. So everything God does in His sovereignty is to give Himself glory and for my good. Sometimes even when He disciplines us. Sometimes even when bad things happen to us. Because reality is we're living in a fallen world, in a sinful world, and because of that, and because of the activity of Satan, and because of the free will of the human beings around us that are selfish, we get hurt, and we suffer, and we want to blame God. But God says, you have to understand something. In the middle of all the pain, and all the dysfunction, and all the suffering of the world, you have to understand something about me. I'm God. I created this. I set parameters in place. You stay within the parameters, you're going to live the abundant life. You get out of the parameters, you're going to suffer some consequences of that. But everything I'm doing, God says, is for my glory and your good. And so we have to understand that going on. Everything God is doing is for our good. So all of those laws in the Bible, all those parameters He's putting in place that we feel like are stifling our freedom, excuse me, they're not stifling us at all. They're just parameters God set in place because He loves us and He wants to see us live life to the fullest. 
So he comes to Job and he said, Job, look, I understand life is tough right now. I understand your, your kids died in an accident. I, I understand that you've lost your job and your money and you're, you're struggling right now. I get it. But here's what you have to understand. You are talking right now with words with no knowledge. That's your problem. I'm God. I'm the creator. You're the created. Who in the created being has the right to ask the creator about all the things the Creator has done wrong. He said, I'm the Creator. I don't do things wrong. The problem is, you're like a three to four year old child. You're talking without knowledge. And that is the problem in our culture right now. We are playing God without having the knowledge of God. We're taking God out of culture. We took God out of culture back in the 70s. We said, no more prayer in schools. We're going to undermine the truth of the Word of God. Secular humanism took over. We're going to believe in evolution. And we'll talk about that in a few weeks down the line. And I'm going to show you uh, how, how absolutely absurd that is. But that's another story for another time. We've taken God out of culture. We don't respect the Creator anymore. We're our own gods. That's humanism. We're our own gods. We're going to do things our own way. And God says, here's the big picture problem. You're playing God and you don't have the knowledge. You're making assumptions about creation and you didn't create it. You're making assumptions about the way the world works and you didn't put it together. You're nothing but a created being. And you know what created beings are created for? To listen to the Creator so they can have the best life possible. And in the rest of chapter 38, he lays out creation. I'm just going to read a little of this. He says, brace yourself like a man. I will question you and you will answer me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? And who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy. Who shut up the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and wrapped it in thick darkness. When I fixed limits for it and set its doors and bars in place. When I said, this far you may come and no further. Here is where your proud waves halt. And then he goes on and he talks about all of the creation and all of the animals and everything he did in creation. He says, Job, where were you? Where were you? Here's what's so interesting to me. Scientists are trying to answer this question that he answers right up here. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? We're trying to figure out the earth's foundations and how it was created. But we're trying to leave God out of the picture. And so we've come up with the Big Bang Theory and, and some of the most interesting stuff you can ever imagine. But you know, what's, you know what's so interesting? Everything we know about science is that much of reality of the creation of the world by God. And you know what? The more we learn about science. You know what's happening now in the world of science? The highest level thinkers in science are going, oh boy, we got it wrong. Everything in creation, or I'm sorry, everything in this universe is pointing back to a creator. And, and we're seeing that. And I'm going to talk about that in a few weeks and you'll see that. But our, our problem is that God is trying to address here is, who are you to play God when you weren't there at creation, when I put this whole thing together. You have to trust me that I know what's best for you and I'm working for your good. And we get into trouble when we start painting outside the lines of the way God set up His creation, assuming that we're God and He's not, and not paying attention to His warning signs. And so that is part of the problem. So he continues on and says this, Will the one who contends with the Almighty correct him. Let him who accuses God answer him. What God is saying is, are you saying I made a mistake? Are you saying I made a mistake? And that's, that's what people are doing in today's culture. When they don't like the way something God set up, they say, well, God just made a mistake. He made a mistake when He created me. He made a mistake when He created uh, sexuality and, and the way we're supposed to function in sexuality. He messed things up when He made the creation. He, he messed things up. God didn't do it right. But luckily, God's got me now, and I'm a human, and I'm creation, but I'm acting like the Creator, and I'll show God all the places He messed this whole thing up. And that's where we start thinking about the problem of evil and suffering. 
there's very good explanations for all that, but we get all caught up in how unfair life is the way I'm created in my circumstances, and we want to blame God and tell Him He's wrong instead of allowing the Creator to love us enough like a parent loves his child to not let us run out in front of cars and the street and pull us in and discipline us and help us see things from His perspective and see how our lives are supposed to fit together according to His perfect, sovereign plan. And so we're in a boxing match with God because we don't want Him to be God anymore. We want to play God and we're angry that we're playing God and it's not working out well. And God says, you need to go back and realize your creation and I'm the Creator. That's the issue at 50,000 feet. One more thing I want to say. Interesting in, in Job 47 and 8. He says to Job again, the second time he starts talking to Job, he says, brace yourself like a man, I will question you, and you will answer me. Would you discredit my justice? Listen to this. Would you condemn me to justify yourself? Oh my goodness. That is the United States of America right there. We are condemning God. God, you're not doing it right. You didn't create it right. You didn't create me right. You didn't create this right. Everything is wrong. Suffering is bad. Everything, everything that is not my comfort is wrong in this world and it's your fault, God. We'll condemn God to what? Justify myself. To do what? Whatever I want to do. Whatever I want to do. It doesn't matter how sinful, it doesn't matter how depraved, it doesn't matter how ugly, it doesn't matter who it hurts. I just want to justify myself. And so we're out here, humans, the creation, shaking our fist at the Creator saying, you did it all wrong, you don't know what you're doing, or we don't believe you're there at all anyway, saying we as little humans, we're all running around as our own little gods. We'll do it the way we want to do it. We're going to ignore the truth of God's Word. We're going to ignore the parameters. We're going to burst through the parameters, shaking our fist at you and laughing. And then if you in any way hold us accountable to it, or anybody who represents you tries to say anything to us about holding us accountable to it, then we will just cancel them out of culture we will shame them into the corner because everyone, everyone has to love my depravity and my decisions that are completely selfish and have nothing to do with Creator God. Now, once again, I know that sounds harsh because I'm so passionate about this issue because I see it so clearly now what's happening in culture and I want to communicate to you the truth from God's Word on what's happening. So l let me just close by saying this. I I'm going to apply this truth to some things going on in culture in the next few videos, okay? It's not because I don't love you. It's not because I hate people. It's not because I'm judgmental or whatever else you want to call me. I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, racist. I'm, I'm not uh, intolerant. I'm just, I'm just a, a man that loves God, that loves Jesus, that's mourning my culture, in mourning decisions we're making, who's maybe, maybe trying to act a little bit like a parent to keep us from going out in front of the car and pulling us back to the curb and saying, could we just rethink what we're doing here? Not because I don't love, but because I do. Because I do. Everyone's created in the image of God. Every single human being is created in the image of God. And I want to share with them God's plan for them and how God has a better life for you than your life without Him. And you don't have to burst through His parameters to find meaning and purpose in life. You just need to realize your creation. And you don't question the Creator. You accept what He has for you. And you let Him work His purposes in you, because when you do that, that's where you find meaning in life. I'm not a hater. I'm a lover. But I love you enough to try to tell you the truth about what's going on. 
Take it to the Lord. Find out if I'm speaking truth. Let's pray. Father, I know this is uh, a difficult concept in this world, really. Um, even Christians, even the church has bought into so much humanistic philosophy that all of us think we have rights that, uh, that are inalienable in, in, in us because of the Constitution. We think that we, we have rights to do things, that even things that are against the pure call of God. Um, and so, Lord, I just, I just pray that, um, that you protect this message and that as people hear it, they hear my heart and they hear the truth. Open up their minds and their hearts to hear the truth, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much. Have a good day.